So back to the question three. So this is all about GCC level and how to work with certs, how to rationalize the denominator, and this is the word problem. So grab your pens, grab your notes, read carefully, try to do by your own, and let's have a look at my explanation. So we have rectangular playground and it has a length of 1 plus square root 3 meters and area of square root of 48 meters squared, okay? So the same units. You need to calculate the width of the rectangle in centimeters. So key, key units here are centimeters, so don't forget to convert on later stage when you have the results in meters. And you need to express your answer in the form a plus b square root of c, okay? So where a, b, and c integers need to be found. Alright, so let's have a look. So if we have rectangular playground, it obviously will have the length and width. And to calculate the area of that, of this shape, we just need to multiply width by the length. So that's why right now we can uh, so either express right now, yeah, it's better. So we need to express the widths from here. According to the formula, it's going to be area over the length. And let's put everything together. So area is square root of 48 over, so what about the length? It's 1 plus square root of 3. So one more time, in terms of units, we have meter squared over meters, and if you apply this units rule, that will ensure that you correctly express the width. Okay, so pretty logically. So you can cancel meters squared and meters, so eventually you will end up with meters. And later on, you will need to convert into centimeters by multiplying by 100, right? Take into account that uh, 100 centimeters in one meter. All right, so, okay, centimeters equals to one meter. Okay, here is the rule. And because we need to present your uh, answer in, in the line so that there, there will be no any thirds, irrationalities in the denominator, in the bottom part, but right now we do have this, so that's why we need to eliminate thirds from denominator. It's called, this procedure is called rationalizing denominator. All right, so let's do, so 40 square root of 48, and what we're going to do, we need to multiply by the same structure, so 1 plus square root of 3, we multiply by the same structure, means 1 and square root of 3, except for we'll take the opposite side to what you had before. It's called conjugated conjugated expression so conjugated expression all right so let's do that and because we multiply the bottom part we need to multiply the top part as well all right otherwise you will have your fraction be changed so now if you cancel you will come back to the original fraction this procedure will allow us to rationalize the denominator because if you have a look at the bottom part you will recognize the formula according to the structure of what you have. And this is the difference of two squares, a squared minus b squared. So in this case, it's going to be 1 squared minus square root of 3 squared, which is 3. Okay, And finally, you'll get minus 2 in the bottom part. So minus 2 stays here. Now, we have square root of 48 times 1 minus square root of 3. So, first of all, let's work on 48, and I will simplify in the following way. So, 48 is 2 times 24, or 4 times 12. So that's why we will have 4 times 12, and 12 is also 4 times 3, okay? Now, why I'm doing that? Because I want to partially uh, uh, take out numbers which are squares. In this case, 4 squared is going to be square number, so square root of that is just going to be 4. So it's 4 square root of 3, okay? You can check yourself, for example, after doing that, if you have some factor before square root, you need to square this up and put it inside uh, the square, under the square root expression, okay? 
So under the square root n, uh, you will finally get come back to your original number. So finally, we've got 4 square root of 3 multiply out by 1 minus square root of 3. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just expand the brackets, basically. I'll get 4 square root of 3 minus square root of 3 times itself will give you 3. So it's minus 12 finally and over minus 2. So it's not good to have this expression and I multiply both parts by minus 2. Oh, just simply, if I take away this minus, I need to swap those terms. So it's going to be 12 minus 4 square root of 3. That's the same as if you multiply by minus 1. Okay, and now we can divide by parts. So it's going to be 12 over 2 is going to be 6 and 4 over 2 is going to be 2. So it will be minus 2 square root of 3. Okay, so, and um, right now what we're going to do, because we've got the final expression meters, but we are supposed to convert into centimeters. Right now it's the final stage. We need to multiply this expression by 100. So that's why I just quick erase the bottom part where I explain how square root of 48 works. And we multiply everything by 100 in order to convert into centimeters. So let's continue and we multiply everything by 100. So we'll get 600 minus 200 and square root of three. So now we have the answer in centimeters. And now we are able to compare with the final expression where A, B, and C needs to be found. So A is going to be 600, B is going to be negative 200, and C is 3. All right. As you understand, no matter uh, whether you multiply by 100 or not doing that, C stays the same, okay? Because 100 is just the factor before the square root. And it doesn't have any effect on C. All right, hope you got it, and let's move to the next question.